Yes! Woo, indeed! Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Uh, a staple in the UK since the 80s, Red Nose Day, only officially launched here in the US in 2015, dedicated to ending child poverty. In the four years since launch, they've raised more than $145 million to help kids in need, with nearly a third of that happening this year alone in what was without question the biggest Red Nose Day ever ever. Here to talk to us about her incredible organization and how they've managed to keep 8.3 million children in need safe, healthy, and educated. Ladies and gentlemen, CEO of Comic Relief USA, Janet Scardino is here. How about that, huh? How about that? We're going to bring her out here in just a second, uh, but first, before we do that, we have uh, a phenomenal video showcasing some of the amazing work that they do. So uh, let's go ahead. Let's run that clip first. Let's do that. In slums like these, girls are vulnerable to abuse. I went to see how a project you support really is changing lives. Your donations are helping girls here fight for their rights. Grace is part of a project called Box Girls, supported by your donations. Sarah is a leader at the project and she showed me around. Your donations are helping empower these girls. Welcome Victoria, this is Korokocho, this is one of the slums in Nairobi, Kenya. So I'll be taking you around uh, this area, explaining to you some of the challenges that uh, Korokocho community normally go through. Excellent. Let's go and see. <laughs> Thank you. So you come here every day? Yeah, I come here every day because most of the schools that we work with as, uh, as Box Girls Kenya, they are based in this area. So how dangerous is it living here? It's very dangerous because they are so de desperate. They don't have a job. They don't have money to cater for their families. There's also uh, drug abuse and alcohol okay. addiction. The number one crime here is the yeah, robbery and violence, and also prostitution, prostitution right. for girls. How young? How young? As early as 12 years old, yeah. <laughs> so can you just tell me a little bit more about the project and exactly what it is that you've that you that you that you've built and how many girls now are part of the project? Okay, we are a Box Girls Kenya organization. It's an organization which empowers young women and girls in the state. Our target group is the girls from age of eight years to twenty-three. So it's not only about boxing and self-defense thing, it's all about girls' empowerment and uh, talking about their rights. Uh, they should also have goals in life and also to go for their rights and uh, exercise them. It doesn't matter what they can, where they come from, yeah. Great. Absolutely amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for Janet Scardino. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much. for. Uh, actually, excuse me for one second. I, <laughs> it's very hard to do that. I, yeah, it's, it's hard to sustain. It really is. It is. But, uh, but it is fun to wear. Yes, I will say that. And you can't help but laughing. So that's, a, you know, that's what it's all about. It's about breaking the ice and sharing a laugh and hopefully sharing... You know, really an ability to, to really open hearts and minds. Yeah, absolutely. That is something that y you have been phenomenal with and phenomenally successful with is, is, is taking something very serious, very in need of our attention, but uh, being able to raise money and have fun talking about it, making it happen, making this difference. Congratulations. Yes. I said it earlier in the introduction, biggest year yet in the U.S. Is that right? Yes, it is. The, it's record breaking. Record uh, for, breaking. Yes, $42 million on the night of TV announced and it's still coming in. And uh, I'm going to stop you for one second. Yes. Hold for applause for $42 million. <laughs> and 
applauding yourselves. I'm sure some of you gave. It's, it's thanks to millions of Americans, thanks Amazing. to uh, incredible partners. You know, we have Walgreens, with the, they are the home yeah. of the iconic Red Nose. Um, partners like NBC that are the best storytellers that allow us to really shine a light on these issues. Yeah. That roller coaster of laughs and tears, they bring you in, mm -hmm. you know, with, with laughter and then they shine a light, as you saw in that film, on some pretty serious subjects. But I'm um, really emotional and wonderful um, outcomes and impact that's happening. And M&M Mars is, a, is another That's partner. Part, yeah. So it's all these scale partners and, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So we just have, we really ha are blessed to have um, so many incredible partners that help us raise this awareness. Um, we, we, we now are at 50% awareness in America. That's pretty in just Yeah, in just four years. So we're really proud of that too. That's, that's fantastic. I, and I want to get into that. I want to talk more in depth about this year. But at first, I just want to start, let's go back a second, because you, uh, you came in what, three years ago, four years ago? Two How long have you been CEO? Two, Two and, and a half, half years, yeah. Two and a half years ago. So, so let's talk about that, because you've worked with some of the biggest media brands in the world, and you also love the, sort of a startup vibe. What was it that brought you to Comic Relief that got you over here to Red Nose? It's exactly those two things, the combination of startup, and we are, you know, we are a, we have, we have a legacy brand that was born 30 years ago in the UK, and it's a cultural phenomenon there, but we're only, again, four years old here, so we are definitely, we fashion ourselves as a startup, and, um, but the other piece was the idea of taking great brands, I have worked at MTV and Disney, Reuters, um, and AOL, AOL. Well, and, um, and I worked on AOL, bringing AOL around the world, so I've had that experience of taking, I iconic brands and translating them and really bringing them to different parts of the world. And so I think the idea of taking an iconic British brand, yeah. bringing it into the US was irresistible, especially being able to do everything you love to do and know it's doing good is incredible. Yeah, I, I can imagine too that that's a huge appeal, right? Yes. Is to make a, a, a tangible difference, uh, and, and specifically with with so many kids. Uh, let's let's talk me through the moment you walk in. It's day one. It's it's an established thing in the UK. It's not really an established thing here yet. What what is your gut instinct? What's the first thing you do in that process to getting us here? You know, two and a half years later. Well, we were we were really. Um, we benefited so much from the founder, Richard Curtis, actually moved here with his family for the, oh, wow. for the year that I had joined. Oh, wow. And so I got to spend so much time with Richard, who is writer-director um, of Four Weddings and a Funeral and Love Actually and all these incredible romantic comedies. But he saw the power of comedy to, again, shine a light and, and bring people into the subject of really trying to create a just world free from poverty and and really trying to understand that nuance because it's not you know it's pretty delicate to combine something as serious as poverty with comedy yeah. there's nothing funny about it um, so I think being here with Richard helping us with that nuanced ability to bring people into the dialogue through with comedy and with humor and joy but then to very delicately shine that light, as you saw in the film with Victoria Beckham, um, and then to come back out in, a, in an optimistic and joyful way yeah. is quite a, it's quite an art. So I think I was blessed as the first thing was learn as much as I could from the incredible legacy um, from Richard and the team in the UK. And was that a big deal for Richard? Did he ever talk to you about maybe in the early days of finding that balance himself and figuring that out? You know, they started, I want to say it was 85, 88, they started. Yeah, 30 and, years ago. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, it you guys absolutely have mastered it, and you, you do it so uh, effortlessly. It's one of those things where it's not easy to do, but you can tell because you make it look like it's easy to do. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And yeah. he, he really, I mean, in addition to learning that art and science, which it, there definitively is that, um, there was also the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation did a study across many countries where they looked at the impact of factual programming and news and documentaries compared to comedy. And comedy outperformed in terms of being able able to get people into a um, into an issue and importantly to get them to take some action so I think we were when we, when we saw that I think that um, it helped us understand that comedy can be a gateway yeah. into um, into our cause but ultimately that that real finessing of the man of the of the messaging and the emotions is so important I, um, I, I want to talk now, I want to jump ahead and let's talk about the success of this year. 42 million and counting, uh, you know, you get such, such an amazing response like that. Ha now the second half, now we've got it. 
we got to see a little bit in that video uh, with Victoria, all the amazing things you guys do. How does that decision process work? How do you figure out, okay, these are the areas that need our attention the most. Let's focus our attention here and do this. What is that process like? Well, you know, it, in some ways it does, it, it starts with the nose. And this year we did innovate on the nose. And that was, again, a learning from the UK and having it be sparkling. And, and that sparkle is really meant to um, send the message of, of letting every child shine and, let, and shining a light on these issues. So that was, a, there was a sort of meaning behind the innovation. And we sold over 10 million noses this year. So we're very, I know, 10 million of anything is yeah, pretty remarkable. Um, and then, you know, sparkle pins and, and, and bracelets. And, we, we, you know, again, we're, we're looking at insights. And Americans like to buy things. And they love to buy things when they know that there's also a donation. In this case, all the proceeds go to the cause. So that helps them show their pride, wear the nose, share, you know, take selfies and share it. So all of that. Um, starts very much with incredible partnership at Walgreens. Then NBC really does help us with the storytelling. And this year, for the first time, we did um, American Ninja Warrior, followed by Hollywood Game Night, yeah. and then the Red Nose Day special. So that, too, it was a beautiful arc of, of programming through the night. Celebrity, you know, it was star-studded and incredible. Many, many of the, ta of the talent have actually been doing things with us for four years. So Jack Black is a great example. He traveled to Uganda four years ago and did a really one of the most powerful um, films that we've done. And he continues every year to want to be part of this. So we're getting... Um We've got over 500 uh, talent involved in the in the sh in the night of TV and the campaign at large. So we're really blessed um, by that. But we, I think, we're always looking to innovate within the night of TV to also say where can we do something that's a bit different, yeah. and um, and how do we create some anticipation? So this year, you know, we dunked um, Anne Hathaway yeah. when we hit 40 million, and uh, you know, we're looking for ways to to really showcase through comedy sketches a little bit of the whole, of, of getting a little bit closer to you know, the act of giving and how much that really does make you feel good, yeah. ultimately. Yeah, when, when you're um, putting the pieces together, because you do, when you strike that balance, and you want to show people the impact. In fact, there's a whole section on rednose.org labeled impact, so you can see specifically where it goes. Um, uh, you know, what, what does that process look like in terms of uh, uh, deciding, okay, these are the packages we're going to put in there this year. These are, these are the wonderful stories. How do you find those stories? I imagine that's got to be one of the bigger challenges. Absolutely. And, and I'm so glad you asked about that because we put a lot of thought. First, it starts also with some research that we do um, in America. You know, what do Americans really care about? And um, they absolutely care about making sure that no child is hungry here. They really care about basic medicine and basic medical attention for children, both here and, and internationally. They care very much about homeless children. That is something that's a, that, that very much pulls at the heartstrings. Um, but equally, education and the idea of clean water being, you know, the idea that in, in parts of the world where you don't have clean water, it's the girls who suffer, because they're the ones who have to collect water and bring it back, and they don't go to school. So telling these these stories um, is really, we start with what are the issues that matter most, and then we also try to pair that with talent that legit, like really genuinely cares yeah. about those issues. So, um, you know, when we, in American Ninja Warrior, we had Matt and Akbar going to projects and that they cared about. And we later, with Hollywood Game Night, Jane Lynch was very involved in the selection of those projects as well. And, and so we're really looking for that ability to pair. Um, and, 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 not, and even beyond the night of TV, we had um, celebrities and, and the Today Show that did a lot for us. Um, and, and we're really, and, and really looking for those natural connections. Uh, you know, you mentioned some of these uh, the incredible talents that you get to work with. I think we have some photos I wanted to look at really quick. Uh, and this sort of speaks to, one, the talent side, and two, the, the way in which the, the red nose is inherently fun. We'll see them in a second here. They'll bring them up. But we've got all these different things. Who would be uh, the one person? Well, who's your white whale? Who do you want to get on board for Red Nose Day? <laughs> but through scheduling conflicts, whatever, it hasn't worked out yet, but we're still dreaming. Who, who's the big catch? Oh, gosh. Um, I think, you know, there have been... 
this is really hard because now I'm going to insult. Actually, Richard, you can't insult anybody. The one, the one thing that Richard um, has absolutely, Richard Curtis has absolutely taught me is never to, to play this game because I will insult. For the one person I credit, I'll insult a million other wonderful people who we want to celebrate. But I can tell you a couple that I was really excited about this okay, year. Okay, let's do that. Let's okay, go that. So way. there were. So um, I mean, and this was actually last year. Everybody, you know, in our office was was um, was so excited when Ryan Gosling, who's right. always attacked by paparazzi. There he was on Red Nose Day last year, and the paparazzi is everywhere. And he pulls a nose out of his pocket and yeah. he puts it on, and he's just like there. And, he, <laughs> and it just was like this great magical moment. Yeah. Um, another this year was, and this we didn't even plan. Jennifer Garner decided she was going to do a whole video. I mean, I think it's two or three minutes long. Do check it out; it's great. Where she wakes up in the morning and she's got the nose on. She goes in <laughs> to brush her teeth and she has a nose on. Yeah. She does all of her daily routine with, with the, the nose, nose on, yeah. and it's this wonderful moment of just like her. And she it was a gift that she gave to us. Um, I mean, other ones that that do stand out: The Simpsons. I was so, great. I, saw that I mean, on Twitter. and that again, that was unsolicited. They that really? was really just. Nancy Cartwright, who's the voice of Lisa Simpson, saying that she loved what we were doing, and she was the one who actually got them to draw the noses on the characters and post it. So, though, you know, these are the magic. The magic moments are the ones that we can't anticipate. Yeah. Um, but of course, Victoria um, designing a T-shirt. Oh, which, we'll get which, to that. Yeah, we have yeah. that. They're wearing the shirt here. This is a uh, custom, brand new Spice Girl shirt that Victoria made. That's right. Here, we, this is, I believe, Amanda Seyfried, Seyfried and uh, I want to say Lily James. That's right. Uh, and then uh, we have some other photos as well. I think one of them is. And it Victoria's. is a great. Here we are. Shirt, yes. Yeah. Here's Victoria in all her glory. There's the Spice Girl shirt. This is huge. It Was is. That? It is huge for us. And you know, there's been a, a long fashion tradition in the UK around these T-shirts. Every year, everybody is like waiting in anticipation. What's the T-shirt going to be? Um, so for Victoria to, to design our very first one here in the States was pretty mega. Yeah. And I would say that was in the whale category of a designer that, you know, gave incredible generous love to the cause. And, and both um, Victoria and David have been involved in Red Nose Day for years yeah. Um, yeah. in doing, some, in some cases, comedy sketches and in other cases, as you could see, some of the more serious appeal films. And for the first time, a design. Where, where do people, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong here, I could have sworn I saw you can get this at Omaze, right? Is the shirt yes, up there? that's right. Yeah. So you can buy, and you can still buy the shirt now. Yep. You can still um, buy also raffle tickets to for, uh, I think we have now six experiences. That oh, there's still... great stuff. There's uh, the, the picnic with Hugh Grant. Yeah. <laughs> That was funny. That's doing really well. Is that one doing yes, well? Yes, I mean, it was kind of a dark horse. I don't think we expected it to do that well. Well, you've got, there's a similar theme, too, kind of calling back to the, the UK origins. You've got the picnic with Hugh Grant, and you've got a tea, was it high tea with the cast of The Crown? Yes, well, of course, and that was released right before the royal wedding, so, of, you know, everybody was, was that was nuts. high anticipation for yeah. that one. so many amazing things. Yes. I think, and this is your, is this your second year doing the OMA stuff in the Yes, US? yes. Yeah, Last yeah, yeah. year we did our Red Nose Day Actually experience, and also um, Breakfast with all the Doctor Who's, which again, <laughs> nobody expected the Doctor Who's to outperform, and they yeah. really did. So we, and it's really considerable donations to the cause. So I do encourage you. It's both, you know, again, we try to make it fun and easy to participate, yeah. and this is probably one of the funnest, the most fun ways that you can. Well, there's just yeah, there's been so much, and we cannot stress it enough that you can still sign up for those. I want to say till the end of June, June 21st, I believe, is what I read. And even some go into July, but some not to. Little, I, I okay. want to create anticipation, but yes, there. So read the. Fun. Fine print, yes. the takeaway there, but you can still go sign up. Uh, and uh, I believe today is also, uh, you still have a day left. To, if you haven't gotten a nose yet, you can still get your nose. That's right. Uh, they still have them for one more day. And the sparkle what? pins, by the way, are sold out in New York City. So if you're anywhere else in the country, do get the sparkle pin. There you go. Um, uh, anyone like watching anywhere else in the country, you can still get the sparkle <laughs> pin. And please send them to New York. Yes. Because yes, we're out. Please, we're out of pins. Please, we are so. out of pins. We are definitely. But, you know, there are other things that we've done this year that were yeah. innovative. So um, yeah, Talk about the new stuff that you guys yeah the new up, stuff right? are well we're um you can now donate just using uh, if you have alexa at home you can just ask alexa to make a donation it's that simple oh, and that so easy cool. yeah so we're that's for the first time this year and um we've also you know things apps like lb that allow you to make a micro donation while you're you know l reading stories and and sharing stories that you care about um is another one that we're very proud of I think we're also looking, you know, we've we've tried to find ways that 
um, at the local level that we could really engage kids. Yeah. So th one thing that was very new this year was we literally went to numbers of cities across the country, from Seattle to Chicago, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Miami. And we, we really, um, I guess, helped to bring together communities and see, especially it was like, you'd see Red Nose Day events at schools, in the workplace, the mayor proclaiming it Red Nose Day, um, and, and just having entire towns come together. And then of course we went to projects and really met with the children who were affected and impacted and had a chance in, in many cases for talent to come back to their hometown and meet kids who have been um, in positively impacted by Red Nose Day. And I will tell you that some of the letters we've gotten after those visits are, I mean, incredibly um, emotional yeah. about how they've really been changed. Uh, one visit in particular at Covenant House, where we had a chance to meet a, a, a man who's now, you know, he was, he's an alum. Um, but he, as a teenager, was on the streets for four years in Los Angeles. And um, at some point, he just picked up the phone and, and got an operator and said, I don't know what to do. Please, can you help me? And this incredibly kind operator put him in touch with Covenant House. And he then went through the program, went through therapy, because, you know, you can imagine what it's like to, after four years, you're not, I mean, you, you're quite traumatized. So he went through therapy, went through just learning how to, like, deal with a kitchen and, and you know, cook a simple meal. Um, and then he eventually got training. And now, the PS to the story, which is incredible, he had a 15-year career at Paramount Pictures um, working in the set department. So he ended up being trained, getting a job, and a successful one at that, and then helped not only himself but his family. And, um, and so it really, I mean, those are the stories, those individual stories will forever change you. And talent who goes to the pro these projects that we serve, they really come out saying, please tell me what else I can do. That's, that's pretty remarkable. How... Wow. So yeah, I, that, that just kind of goes back to where we started the conversation of what brought you to this organization, is being able to, to sort of be a part of making stories like those possible. Um, also, I hope you don't mind I adopted, I noticed yeah. the, the, the method <laughs> by it, which... It is easy. I mean, this, this is, makes me sound terrible. No, of course, this is, this is fun. I enjoy this. But this is fun. But, I mean, there's like, this, everybody's now laughing. That's great. Yeah. But there's something to be said for this method, which I was unaware of until I caught you doing yeah. it midway, and I was like, I'm going to put it on my thumb, too. I, um... I want to ask, before we turn it over to audience Q&A, uh, one of my uh, favorite things whenever around Thanksgiving time, you get the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, right? Huge production. And the last thing they always tell you, like, as Santa's coming out, they go, and so begins the planning for next year. And it's just like, yes. my God, I can't imagine a more anxiety-ridden room than, like, you don't even get a second it's to true. enjoy. You start right away. What, what is your story here at Red Nose Day? It, it, it's just passed, and we've got another one coming up next year. When do you begin the process? Do you take time? Time to exhale? Do you go right into it? Well, I mean, this is the truth. The nose designs happened last summer for 2019. So we, those have been, you know, that, that all, and there's even more innovation to come. Um, so that's exciting. But that, so it literally happens 18 months in advance. So we've been very much focused on 19. 2019 also is a year where both the UK and the US will have a Red Nose Day at the same, in, in the same year. So that also generally brings new excitement in terms of great content, yep. That's uh, really important. And then we also, we, we're already thinking about how, you know, partners like M&M's, they want to create special versions of product um, yeah. because all the proceeds come to the charity um, for, for certain launches of their products as they did with Maltesers last year. So they they need 18 months uh, to plan. So we are looking at, at very at long lead to be able to plan next year's campaign. I have a dumb question. When you're, when you're looking for partners, do you just start with a list of everyone that makes <laughs> spherical or circular products? And that's then you go, all right, these guys will work. Let's get on, let's get on board here. The M&M's dudes, they've been doing circles for years. Yeah, if it's red and it's round, it's good. Um, it's, uh, and even if it's just red, it's good. Yeah. Uh, but but we, uh, no, we're kind of an equal opportunity. We do yeah. have some partners uh, that are not necessarily red and round. But, but yes, that's a good way to start. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. We're going to turn it over. We got some questions from the audience. There's microphones in the room. The first one's going to come from, looks like right here. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, uh, was there like any ideas that you've taken from uh, the UK uh, that you brought on to um, 
Red Nose Day for, you know, like previous years or even this year itself? Thank you so much for asking, and many, but one that I think is the most, perhaps one of the most um, impactful has been the success that the UK has had at schools. So they have, right now, 60% of all kids in school in the UK do something for Red Nose Day. And it is usually a combination, and this is also something we learned from them, it has a combination of curriculum, so they learn about the issues, and we show videos, we share a lot of the, of the content that we create for Red Nose Day in schools. There's a whole curriculum of where kids get to learn about the issues. Um, and then there's a whole fun part, where it's where we, you know, they, they have a celebration on Red Nose Day. They usually get to dress up their favorite teacher or their least favorite teacher in some crazy get up. They do a big, you know, celebration, whether it's a talent show or really fun and innovative ways for the kids to get involved. But ultimately, the teachers all say it really drives empathy and understanding of the issues. And indeed, they want to, I love, this is one of the most incredibly joyous parts of the job, yeah. getting to see kids want to help other kids. And it's so natural. If you say to any child here in America, or indeed I believe anywhere in the world, that there's another child that doesn't have a meal tonight, the first thing they do is say, oh my God, what can I do to help? Like they immediately want to get involved. So I think what Red Nose Day has learned from the UK is really to take to, to start creating um, this gateway of giving at the youngest ages and, and to really bring um, sort of the next generation of philanthropists um, through, through culture. That's a great question. Thank you for that. We've got yes. getting the signal. One more coming at us, and it's going to be right here. Hi. We're going to take an online question. Sophie wants to know, comedy and charity are two things people don't generally associate with each other. Why do you think they work so well together? Yeah, that, that's absolutely right on. When we um, ask Americans, uh, what do you associate with Red Nose Day? They will say, we think it's funny and fun and clever and creative. And those are not usually what the adjectives that you <laughs> would describe for most charities. I think that's actually what the reason it works is we break through with that. We're not like um, other charities. We really do also use we really are tapping into joy and humor and, and fun as, again, a gateway into the cause. And then we shine a light on, on the serious issues. But it is that magical combination of being very differentiated in a, a market that has so many charities and so many great causes. You have to find a way to really break through and to get people involved. That's another great question. Thank you. Was it Sophie? I think it was. Uh, thank you, yeah, Sophie. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, we run out of time. I got to let you go, regrettably. But uh, I want to thank you so much oh, God, for, for God. taking thank time you. to be thank here. Thank you all. Thank and you. Hang out with us. I want to thank you guys for your questions. I want to remind everybody go to rednoseday.org. Go to the Omaze Experiences. There's still time. Have tea with Hugh Grant, okay? <laughs> There's no reason not to. Get out there and do it. Uh, you got one more day to get yourself a nose. Actually, two. Two, two more days. Also right. tomorrow. Also yes. tomorrow. Yeah. Two more days. There you go. You He's got an extension. How often does that happen in life? Get out there. Get yourself a red nose. Make a difference. Thank you so much, guys. Make some noise one more time for Thank Janet you. over here. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you Cardina. so much. Thank you. Thank you.